We need to talk. Holy crap. It has been a minute since I've been in a rabbit hole of rage, but that's where I've been the last week and a bit, and we're going to get into it. But if you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. I am Sherilyn Dale. I'm so glad you found me. Over here on my channel, we generally talk about true crime sprinkled in with some conspiracy theories, cults, problematic scammers, which today's case I think embodies like the majority of those subjects. So yeah, if that resonates with you, I'd love for you to stick around and subscribe. I have a new video for you every week, usually two to three videos a week. All right, we're gonna get right into it because there is a a lot before we do i do have a quick message about our sponsor for you thank you to my friends over at balesa for not only sponsoring today's video but literally giving away free toys or gift cards for toys for everybody who signs up for my giveaway if you've never heard of balesa before they are a bi woman company whose mission is to empower everybody to explore embrace and celebrate their desires, if you will. They have literally something for everybody's needs. We all have different likes and focal points if you know what I mean, and they've got you covered. My personal fave is the Pebble. It's got both the suction and vibe that you can control independently. It's also ergonomically built to just like fit perfectly and cozy in your hand. I also love that there is no annoying pattern modes and their packaging is so discreet. It comes in the cutest little waterproof rechargeable case. And when I say discreet, I mean discreet in the last sponsor I mentioned. And I still giggle about it how when it came, Big Guy asked me if it was like my new earbuds. <laughs> I thought that was so adorable. The feedback from the last sponsorship and giveaway that we did with them was so positive. You all had great things to say as I do as well about Balesa. So we're doing it again. And if you didn't get a chance to get in on the last giveaway, do not miss your chance on this giveaway. Like I said, they are giving away free toys or a free gift card for toys for everybody who signs up through the link in my bio. I will also be sharing over on Instagram, so you can also check out the link over there too. But thank you so much to Balesa for not only sponsoring today's video, but you know, for also taking care of me and my supporters. We love and appreciate you so much. Okay, let me paint the picture for you all, all right? It's a few Saturdays ago and I have the house to myself. This does not happen hardly ever my children were at their aunt and uncles for a sleepover a big guy was at work so you know what what do i decided to do i want to build my hocus pocus lego house as one 37 year old woman wants to do without children and her husband <laughs> in her house and so my issue was i had already watched hocus pocus one and two while constructing the house so i decided to search prime been a while since i'd been on prime to look for a documentary and i come across a documentary called desperately seeking soulmates escaping twin flames universe i'm like okay let, let's just give this a try for a little bit of background ambiance let's just say the lego house did not it didn't get finished i could not turn away from what I was watching, listening to, and I was just even more baffled by the conclusion of it all. And so when the documentary ended, that's when I delved into the rabbit hole. Been there ever since, still there. All right, a couple shout outs though before we get started. Alice Hines did an amazing piece for Vanity Fair about this in my opinion, cult that we're going to talk about today. That I think is what the catalyst for the documentary was. And then also when I was researching, I came across a podcast episode from my friend that I met over in CrimeCon UK, uh, Casey from Cult Vault. She actually interviews a survivor from this, in my opinion, cult. So be sure to go check those out. I will have them linked in the description. All right, so what are we talking about today? Today, we are talking about the world of Twin Flames universe, AKA, in my opinion, one of the most predatory cults on this platform right here on YouTube. 
Mm-hmm. Stay in the way he acts. Oh, okay. well, you don't want yourself, and that's why you're pushing yourself out of your own home. No. And I want to keep being happy, and I never want to That's your lie. You're not happy. You are numbed out. Show up every day in his house and drag him over to yours. You don't know better than God. I want to do your inner work. Fuck you. I'm a f- millionaire. <laughs> what is a twin flame? So... For me, when I think about it, I I think now of popular couples like MGK and Megan Fox, who have kind of clung to that term and and used it quite a bit. And while it sounds like it's basically interchangeable with soulmate, that is not the case at all. A twin flame is supposed to be a bigger deal than a soulmate. The general theory is that twin flame is two people who were split into different bodies but share the same soul. So they're basically one soul in two different bodies. And twin flames make soulmates kind of sound like, you know, child's play in comparison. The general consensus is you'll probably have like many soulmates in your time, but there would only ever just be one twin flame. Enter. Jeff and Shalea Ian, aka Jeff and Shalea Divine. Although today Jeff proclaims himself as like the second coming of Christ, he he didn't grow up always thinking that. Mm. He's got the beard, the hair, you know, blue eyes. But uh, yes, I, I'm suggesting that uh, could I be Christ? Jeff was born and raised in Lapeer, Michigan. He says that he was born to working class parents. Um, He was baptized Greek Orthodox, but then converted to Roman Catholic at the age of seven. He said he attended Catholic school from second to sixth grade, but then transferred to public school. And then said that he still like felt very passionate about God. So he kind of would go back to those Catholic roots and study as a young teen. As for his words, he said that he eventually became disassociated with the Catholic Church and his main reason was based on their position on gay marriage. As per Jeff's own words on his website bio, Jeff felt God created people perfectly and he believed that the church saw people in the LGBTQ plus community as fundamentally sinful. Jeff loved all people and believed they should be given the same right to marry whomever they choose to love. This sounds very inclusive and loving on paper as per his words that he has on his site we will definitely touch into that in a little bit those who knew him say he's basically like the class jokester in school when they were younger he had quote off the charts charisma he was in the drama club he liked to perform he was always somebody who also loved loved he he loved loved Love, love, loved, love. He liked to be in relationships and a former girlfriend of his said that being in relationship with him was like being in a John Hughes movie where you were like the star, you know? To his friends, he never really spoke about career goals, but the the end goal was always to have a very comfortable lifestyle. Um, in high school, he was even dabbling in investments. He wanted to have something that was self-sustaining. And a quote that I saw on or heard from the documentary was, you know, maximum outcome with as little effort as possible. But he wants he wanted to like own his own empire. Jeff said that while he was attending business school at Western University, he came across a website about personal growth. And he said this was the first time that he encountered something where it said that you, you inside you have the ability to change yourself, create your own reality, and the, you know, results were infinite. After reading about this, he said a holy fire was lit into him and it kind of brought him back onto the path of spirituality. He also started working with his first spiritual teacher. And he said that experience was so profound that he was actually visited by angels who came with a message from God that were saying like, your life purpose is to bring people back to God. And he 
wept and cried and vowed that he was going to fulfill this destiny. That fall, he said he sold all of his possessions, packed a backpack with some clothes, and then headed out to Northern California. Here he studied yoga, deepened his spiritual studies, and in the same time, he was also honing in on his business entrepreneurial career in internet marketing. He had kind of dabbled in a few different internet ventures. He had started a kind of lifestyle travel blog called Ender's Adventures. And then from that, as he was learning more spiritually, he tried to kind of go into the life and career coaching side of things, which was is a little bit confusing because he was only 25 at the time, just basically for career had travel blogging and like traveling experience. So like not much to offer career coaching wise. Around this time, he also, you could tell was definitely trying to find himself. He, his blogs and like LinkedIn profiles and stuff like that had changed even posts on his Facebook to like friends and families changed a lot. He was changing his name. First he was Jeffrey Ionethos, and then Ender Ionethos, then Shafira Ionethos, and then I think eventually settled back on Jeff at one point. He also was trying to dabble in like the Airbnb side of business. So he was really, really trying to get his hands in a lot of baskets, seeing what would fit, what would succeed is kind of how I perceive it on the outside. After a year of him being in California, he packed up all of his things again, moved to Hawaii, not with really any plan. And he was, he had even kind of said that he was like, I'm just going to pack up and, you know, let my spiritual guide take me and figure it out when I get there. It sounds like he was dabbling in learning about a lot of different types of religion. And five years into him being in Hawaii, he meets his twin flame, a woman named Shalea. It was 2012 when they met. They actually met through a mutual friend online on Facebook. So she was in the United States. Jeff was in Hawaii. Well, I guess that is the United States. But she was in Arizona. Come on, Geraldine. And Jeff was in Hawaii. Allegedly, he posted some crass meme on her Facebook wall. And then she was just like a smitten kitten. They started exploring a romantic connection. Now, Shalea also was, it seems, experimenting with reinventing herself. She was actually born in Canada and she was born Megan Plant. She was raised Catholic. I guess her mom was a devout Catholic. And when Shalea was only 10 years old, her mother, Madeline, and father, William, divorced. And he moved to the US when she was 12 years old. And as per her father's description of this time, it definitely put a strain on everything. The distance was really hard. And she's also spoken about the pain that divorce has caused her from seeing it in her family. And she says that, you know, her whole message and life path is to make people realize that there, you know, there, there's something more out there and you, you wouldn't want pain for your children by going through a divorce. And this statement is really interesting because we will see later clips where she basically says the complete opposite, that she's encouraged people that if they have their twin flame and they know who their twin flame is, she's encouraging divorce and saying that if there are children involved, they will be happier seeing their parent happy. So just kind of remember that for later on. Obviously, we don't know what the context of the dissolve of her parents' relationship is, but I'm sure, you know, when people get divorced, one or both of them are unhappy and are trying to seek that happiness and that betterment for everybody involved. Regardless, it it's clear that whole situation affected Shalea. And sadly, when she was 15, she was given another heartbreaking blow when she lost her mother to cancer. So she moved to the US and friends said that that relationship with her family remained quite strained. It sounds like her path was quite similar to Jeff's. She was kind of experimenting with different 
spiritual paths. And when she met Jeff, she was living in Sedona. She was working as a hairdresser, but she was also studying with a spiritual teacher. So she says her spiritual mentor is giving her all of these tools, how to uh, unlock her full potential, heal her traumas. And while this is happening, she's learning to love herself and she attracted her twin flame when she met Jeff on Facebook. Jeff flew out from Hawaii to go and visit Shalea and both of them said that when they met, there was this instant connection unlike any anything that they had ever experienced before. Both of them have said, you know, like we have been in relationships in the past, we had been, you know, in love multiple times, but there there was nothing like this connection. Jeff didn't know anything about twin flames, Shalea did, and she basically explains to him, like, I think that this that's what this is, like we are each other's twin flames. So she decided to go all in with the relationship and then moved to Hawaii with Jeff. When she went out there, basically they kind of melded together with her more extensive knowledge of the spiritual side of things and the twin flame side of everything, of their connection. And then with his experience in trying to do blogs and vlogging and having a good YouTube channel and stuff, and they melded them together and really turned that into their entire identity and then shifted that into a brand. So they started a YouTube channel to share their knowledge and their experience and expertise in twin flames and how you could find your own twin flame. And they're not the only people who have like a, a channel talking about these things, but in my opinion, I feel like they have definitely taken their teaching series to a predatory business that is built off of people's desperation and trauma and vulnerability, which we, we are just getting, we're just getting our toes dipped in to, to the hole we're about to jump down into, okay? I think one thing that really just gets me so fired up here is in my opinion, preying on somebody's desperation and desire to be loved is so deplorable because it's something that for the majority of people, like we yearn for, like who doesn't want to find love? Who doesn't want to find their twin flame? And the issue is, is when you can't find that or say you, you think you have found that and you lose that, there's just like, not a lot that hurts more than heartbreak in the world. It causes people to get so low in life sometimes and in that vulnerable state, they go out and they try to search for answers. And so, you know, some of them start out by, when will I find my soulmate? Did I lose my soulmate? How did I, how do I know if, you know, I just lost the love of my life? And then you start seeing postings about twin flames like oh okay breaking down what a soulmate is and then a twin flame and then that kind of gets you stumbled into that that rabbit hole and enter the twin flame universe hi i'm shalia and i'm jeff hi it's jeff and shalia and today we're going to talk about uh twin flames while they have their youtube channel where you can watch videos for free and they also also have like free spin-off videos that you can watch they took that and then kind of turned it into like a an MLM twin flame course. They started the twin flame ascension school and that is definitely the main push and what they say will take you to the next level and guarantee their words not mine that you will find your twin flame. Your journey is yours and no one can do it for you. However, we do have a very solid ironclad guarantee. We guarantee harmonious union with your truth and flame as a result of this class. Now there's different ways to come across uh, Twin Flame Universe. There is their YouTube channel, they have a Facebook group, they have paid ads, they have a website. So however you come across it, basically there's a link that everybody leads you back to the website to sign up for lessons, join the school, become a student. And 
It's even on the website where you're reading through it and they've got a frequently asked question tab and basically everywhere it's saying like if you follow this if you listen to us we guarantee results not only do they guarantee it but they go as far as saying that it's their teaching that is the only one out there that can heal all blocks and barriers that are preventing you from having harmonious union now the starting cost of their ascension school is three thousand $333. The everything package is $8,888. Now there is like micro mini courses and stuff for a couple hundred dollars that you can pay also to just kind of dabble in it as well. But these are the main pushes. They're also big numbers people. So you can see that, you know, like looking for the, the numbers and the signs. So like the 333 There we go. Like I said, they also have that private Facebook group. They also have a trauma healing program. You can also order meals through their startup called Divine Dish, and they now also have a church. I guess the appeal <laughs> that they try to push is that you can have what they have. They are real life walking examples of twin flames who have unlocked the secret of how they got to where they are and how you can can get to where they are and find your harmonious twin flame union it's is a phrase that they use a lot now the reason why i kind of tossed in the term twin flame mlm is because yes they're they they push the school they push the teachings and the courses and and buy all that there's like over 600 hours of video to watch through these courses but their main motive now seems to be recruitment. So you don't just learn from Jeff and Shalea, although like most of the libraries of the classes and stuff like that are them, but you learn from a coach that they have trained and they have taught this secret recipe to. And those coaches can in turn recruit other coaches. So basically what they say is not only can you find your twin flame and get into your harmonious twin flame union, but you can also unlock infinite financial success. Keep in mind to get to like the highest tier of a twin flame ascension coach, you need to have watched every video and paid for like the entirety. And that's really where you realize how predatory everything is. I have watched far too many videos than I would like to admit that I hope will just like unsear themselves from my brain. I also joined the Facebook group. <laughs> yeah. Where I was able to see for myself how unqualified these people are to be giving advice and working through really hard times in some of the members' lives. I literally saw somebody post about how heartbroken she was that her twin flame had cheated on her. And the response managed to turn it around on her saying that he's cheating because there is something in you that is making him want to do that. So you have to find out what that is and heal it. Have you tried the mirror exercise? And the mirror exercise is like the premise of their teaching. Today we're gonna to talk about twin flame mirroring. Ooh. All that good stuff. So let's go through the, the mirror exercise on their website. So they say example one, step one, identify the upset conscious sentence. Who are you upset with? What are you upset about and why? For example, I'm upset with my twin flame because I feel rejected by him or her because he or she is ignoring me. Step two, invert all pronouns to point to yourself. We do this because what you experience externally is simply a reflection of an inner state. For example, I am upset with myself because I am rejecting myself and I am ignoring myself. It's already feeling problematic. Step three, ask yourself whether this is true. The answer is yes. It will always be true because you can only experience a pattern that is within you. Example answer, yes, it's true. I don't acknowledge my feelings and I ignore and reject my own boundaries. I don't feel like I am good enough to be loved so I ignore my needs and I don't nurture myself. Step four, once you've identified this place within you, 
Ask, what does he or she need to feel fully loved right now? Give yourself space to receive the answer from within. Once you know it, give yourself the love that this part of you is asking for. Remain with this part of you until you feel it received everything he or she needed. Well, that doesn't even really make sense. Remain with this part of you until you feel it received everything he or she needed. Oh, so like you're feeling it received until they feel it received. So basically, you could have just randomly met somebody that you think and believe is your twin flame. They're rejecting you and then you blame it on yourself because there's something wrong with you that that they're rejecting you for. Like, And then the fact of saying like that, that there's boundaries and stuff within that. No, that's the boundary. Some people just don't want to be with another person and that's not your fault. (laughs) So to sit in a mirror because someone has rejected you and be like, oh, there is something that I am um, exuding that is making this person not want to be with me. (laughs) I I can't. And this is where it gets so (laughs) problematic Because they're basically saying like, instead of holding somebody accountable for not treating you the way that you are hoping for, you have to take responsibility. Like it's your fault they're doing this. There are people who have been ex-members, ex-students who when they were in it, they were having a hard time accepting that their twin flame had filed a restraining order against them because they didn't accept the boundary of the twin flame saying they were not interested in pursuing something. So the answer of of her being upset with the restraining order was to look within because you put that restraining order on yourself. A Facebook member said, (laughs) you made false statements, not the person who did that in, in the restraining order. Why did you do that to yourself? Seeing some of those interactions for myself, even in the group, I I mean, I saw some of the examples on the documentary that I watched, but actually going in and going into this group and reading these posts, there are a lot like that. And then every, almost like I'm going to say 90% of them, it'll be like, how is that making you feel? Did you try the mirror exercise? There was literally a former member who was in a DV situation. Her twin flame placed his hands around her neck. She was scared. She went to the group. And one of the responses was, he's he's trying to be your divine masculine. So is there something in you that you're not letting him do that? Did you try the mirror exercise? (laughs) I like I'm going to rage right now is kind of why I'm laughing because it's like did you did you try the mirror exercise like how about did you get out are you okay did you file a police report like did you do the effing mirror exercise I I can't. I I literally cannot. And I understand that there are situations where, yes, like self-healing and doing that like inner work for yourself can be beneficial. But every situation is not your fault. I deal with learning about victims on a daily basis. And the thought of one of those people being in a situation and something horrible happening to them and thinking like if they had come across somebody like this and just being like oh like you put yourself there like that's your fault you trusted that person like these people are thinking like this is my 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 other partner like I'm just I try to understand like to be like did you you aren't doing the mirror exercise enough and um it's attracting bad things happening to you in some situations, like with the people that I learn about daily, like their lives are gone. And I don't think that the mirror exercise would have effing prevented that. There are just shit people out there who do bad things to other people. And it's not because you've attracted that to yourself. I keep thinking and going back to like the, the phrase boundaries there, because like there's just none, like I said, in this group. They have told people to break up marriages if they believe that they're twin flame is their twin flame but that person is 
married to somebody else. Yes. So uh, dissolve that marriage. Don't worry about that spouse. Yeah. If your heart's true calling is your twin flame, there's nothing that can stand between the two of you. Nothing at all. Yeah. And like I said, they've even encouraged people to go as far as stalking, which has, it has led to a number of members being arrested and charged. Show up every day at his house and drag him over to yours. Start grabbing his stuff and putting it in your house. And this is like a two-way street. So the same can be said where somebody, you know, is feeling like, oh, I, I'm, I'm being rejected. Well, what am I, what am I, why is my twin flame rejecting them? And they're like, okay, like actually they're rejecting yourself. You're rejecting yourself and you need to open up more for them to come and it's like so you've got you've it just it, it all doesn't make sense I can't even try to make it make sense because everything is just like like a, a double speak here they're like okay your your twin flame is rejecting you but just keep pushing and then if the twin flame is doing something wrong like you're in a dv situation like where are the boundaries for your safety where are the boundaries for your other, the person you're pursuing safety? Like, there's just, there aren't any. Like, the, the word boundary, although they've used it, it, I don't know if they know what the term is because they're encouraging you to step over them to get to, like, your twin flame. But then when that twin flame, like, puts up a boundary, like, you keep going. And then if they're doing something wrong to you, like, there's no boundary. I just, I... I can't. This doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> I, can't, I, I can't make it make sense because it doesn't make sense. There was actually a former member that Alice Hines, who did the Vanity Fair article, spoke to. And this woman in particular was one of those people who had a restraining order placed against her from her ex-partner. This guy even ended up like reaching out to her family, being like, I have tried every method that I can. Like, she's just not understanding that there's there's no hope here like she has to move on for her mental health I'm trying to move on she's making that really difficult and he even expressed that he felt like she was like in a, a delusion and she was being encouraged to continue pursuing him by what he believed was like some sort of cult that she might have gotten herself wrapped into and so when she went to share with Jeff and Shalea that there was a restraining order. It was like they were, they they praised her. They, con Jeff congratulated her and said, you, you are trusting and having faith in the process and you are following God and you're, you're following yourself. And he quotes that, I have enormous trust in you now when before I had none. Because she got a restraining order placed against her for harassing somebody. And then it's that like validation that that they give you paired with the constant reminder like oh yeah like just keep up with it keep listening to them you just got to trust in God in your process like take those classes don't give up because you are you are going to be with your twin flame. And that <laughs> control manipulation is so effing unethical like I can't even. You have people out here like desperate opening up to you sharing their traumas and it's for your financial gain like at the end of the day here that that is the the, the whole picture here and they can say all day that it's not but it is like coaches and members they're encouraged to take out facebook ads to recruit people to go into facebook groups so like if if you're in a group and it's not predatory like there are groups out there that like to just talk about this kind of stuff, like to talk about like spirituality, and that is so okay. Like to talk about like twin flames, so okay. But when you have people that they go and then they send in, and then they're like, hey, if you really, really wanna find somebody, like come over here. So you're going into a pool of people who they're already believing, and maybe they're not having luck, and you're just like recruiting them over and asking them to pay $8,888 for your full course. From what I can see in the group, there are literally members all around the world. Right now there's over 40,000 of them. They're different, all different types of people. There's 
you know, prof like business professionals, there's doctors, there's stay at home parents. Most of them are single. And the common theme from people who have now left is that it all starts out great. I mean, that's a given. You join this community of like-minded people, you get to talk about things that you might feel like just in your everyday life, your friends and your family don't understand or aren't as passionate about as you. So now you've got like a, a group of friends, right? Similar traumas also, similar goals and interests, just like heal that and find your twin flame because it's guaranteed over here. But then people start to realize like there, there's, there's, there's no guarantee here. Like there's nothing really to back that up at all besides how much money do you have and are willing to spend to follow our path. Now, one of the ways in the beginning, in the very beginning of all of this starting, they were able to keep people's attention and keep them motivated because they did have a couple in the group who were twin flames. They were their twin flame examples. So whenever somebody was just kind of feeling like, oh, I've really been putting in all the work, like I, like I, I've been doing it all, I've been paying the money, I'm not getting any results whatsoever. It was like, well, you know, like, look, it's not just like me, you know, like Jeff and Shalea, like we also have this this other couple and the couple their names are Anne and Katrina now they had met in college not through Jeff and Shalea they had always felt like there was some bond some connection to them but they didn't really know how to put their finger on it didn't know what it was and neither of them had come out as as gay they were same sex and both of them just kind of like felt like they were straight so they kind of just like went on and did what they thought that they you know, we're supposed to do had like a traditional marriage with somebody from the opposite sex. I don't even think we can really use like traditional now. Like there's so many different types of marriages now anyways. But, you know, ha had had a marriage with an op a member of the opposite sex, had kids, did the whole thing. And then one of them was, you know, kind of looking into soulmates and stuff like that and comes across the meaning behind twin flames. And it resonated with her and she actually reached out to her friend and essentially professed her love for her. So they joined the group together and just kind of felt like it was a space where they could get the support, be themselves. Again, like it's with like-minded people who understand, you know, the depth of this connection. And ultimately they, they did end up leaving their partners and being together and getting engaged and really, really happy. So Jeff and Shalia really clung on to them because they were like the only couple at this time besides them that were together and had followed that like twin flame journey. So they were present for a lot of calls, a lot of group discussions, and they became coaches. And so I think they were like maybe like the first set of coaches so that Jeff and Shalia could kind of like start to expand their reach and make a profit. So like they can't be obviously present for all of these hundreds and then as it's growing to thousands of people that are wanting to learn with them. So this was like one of those scenarios where they were like, okay, you can become a coach and then you can make money off of it. I believe they said that they made over $100,000 when they were coaching. There have been students who have admitted to paying like tens of thousands of dollars for coaching and the full the full library of all of these videos. But ultimately what started happening is they were like the only couple. So there people all of these people are being encouraged to just keep doing the work, keep doing the mirror exercise, keep paying for courses, keep showing up to these Zoom calls like every other day. And th that guarantee of this, you know, harmonious twin flame union, it was just not happening. And people were straight up calling it out in the group being like, I have done the work. I have put it in. I am telling you, yes, I thank you that I am, you know, a better person, a better version of me than when I came in here, but now I'm getting frustrated and I'm feeling like I'm getting taken advantage of. And so they started to scramble. And essentially what they did was they started matchmaking within the group and, and kind of going against what they had been teaching because they were people in there who were doing 
all of this work. I mean, sometimes like years of work. And the reason they kept going was because Jeff and Shalea had said that God had confirmed, yes, like this person that you think is your twin flame is your twin flame. And when this person is not budging on the fact that they do not want to be with that person who believes is their twin flame, then all of a sudden they kind of like backtracked and they were like, oh, um, you know what? There, that was a mistake. That was your false twin flame, which is, you know, hard to detect because it can feel so strong. So actually that's not your twin flame. Your twin flame is so-and-so who is already in the group. Like it's, it's a member that's been in the group that's also been trying and that's why you're not seeing success because this is your twin flame. And this rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. There was a, a couple clips that I saw on the documentary that I'll share with a woman named Maria Sophie. And she, again, had been doing all the work trying to get there. And she had been paired with somebody who, now I don't know his full backstory. I don't know if he had gone on there to find like his human version of twin flames, but there was like clips of Zoom calls with him and stuff where he was trying to do the mirror exercise and work so that his cats would be more like loving to him. And I actually followed up with him and checked in on him last week. And like every other post on his on his post is like of cats and stuff. So the guy really loves cats. So I don't I don't know if he was trying to like strengthen his relationships with his cats. That was definitely something that happened on there. And then he said he did the mirror exercise and it worked anyways. So Marie Sophie, who's been also putting in the work, but to, to you know attract her her twin flame that she has met is being told that no that was a false twin flame this guy this guy is your twin flame like so you guys need to make that work like encouraging them to like move in together and and be twin flames and so the clip i'm going to show you this is how they like how jeff and shalia deal with people who question this because to you and i me just saying this you're like well, yeah, obviously that just makes sense. It's just a scam, right? They're like, okay, it wasn't working. They're not guaranteeing what they're saying. They're guaranteeing everywhere on every platform. And of course, someone's gonna have questions. I have questions, you know, like I'm not even the one being put in this situation. And so when you question though, this is where you see the veil slip and their true colors. So the clip I'll show you is her saying like, I like basically she feels uncomfortable and that she wants to be able to get there to believe that this person that they're saying is her twin, twin flame is her twin flame because she's not feeling it right now. And, and you don't question Jeff and Shalia. So here's the clip. Why don't you tell us uh, what you heard in today's class? What did you get from it? I heard some good things, but I, I really have a lot of doubts still myself. Mm -hmm. You keep those doubts. Hang right on to them. I want to come to the conclusion of Fabia as my twin on my own as well. Oh, there's your problem. Yeah. Are you alone? No. No, You have God, right? Mm-hmm. You have to have this one figured out. That's why you came to me, isn't it? To get this figured out. That's why you sat through every class. You dealt with all the hard shit. You showed up today. You're not happy alone, are you? I always choose to be happy, and I already am. Mm -hmm. And I want to keep being happy, and I never want to That's your lie. Pay. You're not happy. You are numbed out. You cannot be happy without your twin flame. But I am happy. But I've had about enough of that, Marie Sophie. I've had about enough of your disrespect of me. It's getting pretty old. Well. I will not be abused by you, Marie Sophie. You don't know better than God. And you must surrender to him. The next issue that they ran into really quickly is that the group is around 80% or more women. So the large majority of the people are looking for their male twin flame. So the next heavy push was that there is a divine masculine and a divine feminine. And you are either one or the other and your anatomy should match that active role that's presenting. According to former students who would see a lot of this discussion in the private Zoom meetings, they would say that 
Jeff and Shalea would say, if you're divine masculine, you should be physically male because that is what God intends. So they would tell like certain women in the group, you are, you are divine masculine. God has told us you are divine masculine. You need to lean into that with everything. There was a, a person that was in the dock that lightly that they lightly touched on. That person wasn't like wasn't speaking in the dock, but they were using it as an example. And I'm going to refer to him by his first initial, which is G. So after being in the twin flame universe group for like over two years, G, who was female at the time, had not found harmonious union yet. Then the story is that two coaches, two people that were in the group that were close to G reached out and said they had been speaking with Jeff and Shalea and Jeff and Shalea, you know, wanted to know how G perceived themselves like in, in a relationship. Like, were you divine masculine or divine feminine? And the reason we're asking is we believe that there's like a gender block going on here. So through the mirror exercise and meditation, G came to realize that he was divine masculine and transition. The next thing after that was that they, the coaches were like, oh, you know, like it's been revealed that you're, you, you, we've channeled your twin flame. We know who your actual twin flame is. The twin flame that you believed all this time is a false twin flame. And your twin flame is actually B, who was a member of this community. So I guess G reaches out to B and says that this is, you know, what he's been told. And, and at first she was really hesitant because she's straight and was also emotionally attached to the person that she believed was her twin flame. Like she's doing all of this work because she was wanting to be with that person. But she thought on it and realized, okay, like maybe like all of the these reservations that my twin flame is having and all of these blocks that I'm experiencing are because, you know, Jeff and Shalia and the coaches are right. Like you are my twin flame and decided to, you know, lean into that and went and visited G. And actually the two of them even moved in with Jeff and Shalia, stayed at their house and did intense training with them so that they could, you know, present themselves as like the new happy couple. And they did, like they would also host calls where they would talk about like, oh, we didn't really see this coming, but this is our experience. And now we are in harmonious twin flame union. So we kind of started talking about this a little bit earlier about how, you know, we've only been really attracted to like men our whole lives. So it is a different experience. What you learn in the doc though, is that B was really struggling with this when she and G had gone out to stay with Jeff and Shalea, they had cut out their entire family being told that they weren't supportive enough just for simply asking like questions like, oh, okay, well, you know, you had been so caught up on this person before what's happening and just trying to make sense of it and that you weren't allowed to ask any questions. So, so they cut their family off. And then it wasn't until one day that B reached out to her mom and just said, I am not doing well. I'm really unhappy. Things are not okay. I need to come home. And she said she didn't want anybody to know that she was coming. She wasn't going to tell Jeff and Shalia. She wasn't going to tell her partner. She just needed to come home. So she booked a flight and moved back home into this day as per the when the documentary was released like she is still struggling to find herself again and gain her confidence back based on her whole experience like everything that had happened to her and just i think processing the control and like the manipulation these people like in the twin flame universe aka jeff and Shalea, had over her this is not the first time that this has happened there are multiple accounts from former members who have said that there are a handful of students that this has happened to. Usually it'll be people who are maybe bisexual or gay, and then they're coached into like leaning into that, you know, gender that they're presenting more as. So if you, you know, for example, if you are a lesbian who likes to just like have more masculine traits and just get along better with guys and stuff like that, like that's okay. You're allowed to be a lesbian who just kind of like likes to be more dudely, but you're just, you're still a lesbian. And they would say like, no, 
you like that's not a thing you just 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 own just own that masculine side just be a man now there are people who are part of the lgbtq community who have weighed in on this there were experts that were in the documentary that have said like essentially it's like gen gender conversion coaching and like it's it's wrong of course like if if that's truly your identity and you know you have some form of you know gender dysphoria there are that 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 is a thing that is a real thing and that's okay but it's also okay to be gay right <laughs> like just because you present something or you could even be straight and just be more masculine or be more feminine you know so i that really stuck with me because when jeff kind of explains like how he got to where he is right now and why he wanted to leave the Catholic Church about them not having any support for the LGBTQ community. It's it's really, really weird. It's a really weird dynamic to look into because, you know, he's saying like God loves all in all forms. So that should be in all forms. Like however your members are choosing and not just because you're wanting to make money off of your group looking successful. So when you approach somebody who's straight and you're saying okay this is your twin flame and that person is of the same sex and then you just kind of reassure this person oh don't worry like that they're actually divine masculine and they're they're going to be leading into the, their transitioning to try to make that other person feel like oh, okay well then that relationship makes sense and really it's so that the outside image you can try to show more success stories like i i just i cannot wrap my head around all of this. Now, Jeff and Shalia have been questioned about this. They insist that any member who has discovered their, their divine gender have never been pressured to change their outward appearance, to transition, change their pronouns. But we know that there are like a small number of people within that group who have already medically transitioned. I wanted to fact check some stuff. Coercing people to change their gender, would you say that you do that? Absolutely and unequivocally not. Not once, not ever. Okay. Nor will it ever happen. Okay, great. And those who say that it did happen are lying about the reality and the true context of what was being communicated. Mm -hmm. They are misleading you. You are being misled, Alice. Okay, I have like, you know, things that I've watched myself or reviewed myself that point me to a particular interpretation. And this message to Anne sure looks like you do tell people to change things about themselves. Okay, well, I don't. Well, Anne definitely tried to tell you guys that she wasn't comfortable taking a guy's name and pronouns, and you shut up. That's not true. Way. That's not true. She said you that. You watched the same video. Yes, that's what That's she my said take. There. Okay, fine. Take whatever, you, whatever take you want to take. That's not the truth. The truth is- At the time of Alice's reporting for Vanity Fair, she had spoken to at least five women who had resisted accepting their new gender and they ended up leaving the group. They all didn't leave the group like on their own accord, but basically they were blocked and shunned because they were like resisting, accepting like their divine masculine. So these are people's truths and these are people's accounts and their feelings and Jeff and Shalia can say all day and night that they don't do this but unfortunately their words um, in some of their sessions say otherwise. I want to share a clip of Anne and Katrina who I shared with. It's the couple who was essentially like their like poster they're poster twin flames to get people to stay into the group, believe in it, and left their like heterosexual relationship to be together. So we actually see a clip from this documentary where they're doing like a, a Google session. They do a lot of these, as I mentioned. I'm sure they were like every other day. There's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos to watch. And one of these sessions, Jeff, tells Anne that he wants her to explore a male name and male pronoun. And I'm gonna let you watch that clip just to see how that interaction all went. I wanna ask about some things, or some specific things, and they're gonna be sensitive subjects. And so I will respect everyone 
in encountering this sort of topic so that everyone can feel um, at peace and at ease and not pressured about the subject. Because it can be very sensitive to people and understandably so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so are, are you comfortable with everything I just said, guys? Yeah. Okay, good. So I want to ask um, Katrina first. Katrina, what is it like to be with a divine masculine in a woman's body? You love Anne completely is, physically. Yeah, I love Anne's physical form completely. Everything that, that Anne is. It, my level of attraction doesn't change based on the way Anne expresses uh, gender at all. How do you feel about having such a feminine name? Uh, being called such a feminine name as Anne. It's, it's been, uh, how I've always, uh, I guess, labeled myself and referred to myself, so. Why would you keep a name that's so obviously feminine? I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. So well, why Dan? doesn't feel good about the name Dan. I don't know, it just doesn't resonate. <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're, you're playing an avoidance game. And it's the avoidance game that prevents you from moving forward here. Just let um, let, let the name be. Uh, um, it, I would consider that name. Damn. Mm. Yeah. There, uh, and the man and Katrina. I literally can't tell you the degree that my blood boils to when I think about that interaction. First, by him starting the whole thing off by being like, this is a safe space. This is a sensitive subject that we're going to talk about. Are you comfortable with all of that moving forward? And then they say yes. And then when the discussion of the name change, you can clearly see the social cue there, the visible cue that that. Anne is uncomfortable and you keep pressing and then choose a name for her. Like you don't get to choose a name for her. And then the follow up with the, when you, when he called her and the man, like freaking, like I want to swear so bad, but monetization purposes, we are not going to, but effing, effing revolting. And, and we've been talking with Anne the man. Like, no. Now, I guess what you don't see in the clip is Jeff does say like, oh, you know, like I would never force Anne to do anything. You'll notice that we only use pronouns here that people prefer. And that's because, you know, this topic is so sensitive and that's just like not how we roll. But, <laughs> but Jeff, <laughs> after several weeks when Anne hadn't changed the name that Jeff had assigned to her, Jeff got upset. And he ended up sending text messages to Katrina, Anne's wife. I'll just read off some of them for you, okay? You guys look dumb as F, hiding behind the lie still. In another text, he went and said, take a guy's name and a guy's pronoun or I will need to put someone else in charge of sales who does respect my work. Now, eventually they had another group session and in front of everyone and just basically says that, you know, like, okay, I, I did your experiment for you, Jeff, tried it out, not comfortable with it. I don't like it. Um, and I don't like the name Dan and he gets super offended by that. So you have to see that. Here we are in class again. Yeah. For a call last week, we talked to Anne the man and Katrina. Let's uh, check in with them again if they're available. Don't you look upon me and the man and say, man, I, I just, I love how he is. I want to be more like that. It's not a good deal. It's time to make a new choice to be a man. Dan and Katrina. Mr. Dan. Is that what I call you, Dan and Mr.? Well, I, I don't like the name Dan. But don't like Dan! It's a perfect name. Do you believe me when I say you're a man inside? I have to be willing to. Uh, this is very political. Do you believe me or not? I say that you're a man inside. How does that feel? It feels like you're talking about something that's like an outer reality and putting it inside. Or you're going to stop right now and you're going away from that anger and it's not serving you. 
I know, pissed off man, my seat won't get you. If you didn't catch that at the end, he says, I know a pissed off man when I see one and it's you. <laughs> Oh my God. Like I just, I love all of my gear that's in front of me right now. And I just want to like toss myself into it. Because of that interaction and Anne essentially defying Jeff and God, the next day Anne and Katrina woke up to just like a flurry of messages. They had been blocked from everything that had to do with Twin Flames Union, the school, their coaching, um, everything. And then I guess Jeff had posted like a public video explaining that they had to release Anne and Katrina and that they were leeches on their system and trying to like infiltrate into the group and take over. <sighs> yeah, gaslight manipulation at like its finest. Now, Alice did speak to several trans members who at the time that she was reporting, were actively still in the group and insisted that nobody pressured them in any way. And that absolutely can be true. There's no way that we can we can say like your experience is your experience, isn't your experience, it is your experience. But it just brings up a really important question as to like how this all came about in the first place. Like what qualifications do these people have to lead you to that question when you weren't having it prior? The short answer of what qualifications do you have to diagnose somebody is freaking nothing, absolutely nothing. But I will let, um, I'll let their own words on their website share that with you. So let's start. So this is from the Twin Flames Universe site under under the uh, What Qualifies tab, okay? So each Ascension coach shown on our website has completed their Certified Ascension Coach or Master Certified Ascension Coach training. This is achieved through an in-depth Ascension Coach training course over a period of many months through Twin Flame Universe. To achieve master certification, coaches will have completed the entirety of Jeff and Shalaya's trainings of union, encompassing a minimum of 750 hours of work and study. Additionally, they must have provided a minimum of 100 hours of coaching sessions prior to their graduation as a master certified Ascension coach. So essentially, it ha you have to watch all of Jeff and Shalaya's trainings that is not provided to you that you have to pay for. You have to do over seven, a minimum, so over 750 hours of training, all of which is not, you're not compensated for. Each certified ma and master certified Ascension coach is a member of the Association of Ascension Coaches, which oversees the regulation of the professional coaching standards offered by the coaches, including reviews on a quarterly basis. This ensures all certified Ascension coaching through Twin Flames Universe is conducted in a professional manner and is maintained at the highest level for the client. Being a member of the Association of Ascension Coaches means absolutely nothing, okay? It means that people paid thousands of dollars to sit and watch and listen to Jeff and Shalia's insufferable videos and trainings and that they are now qualified to coach somebody. That is like me saying, I don't know if you watch my friend Chelsea Suarez over on IMCC Suarez. She does like a lot of like exposing scams, MLMs, all that type of stuff. But that's like me saying, I trained at uh, Chelsea Suarez's school for the Spaghetti Monster, which she likes to reference a lot. And now I am qualified to talk on all things teaching of the Spaghetti Monster. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh my God, we, the whole site just gets me. I, I wanna share another part of this one like really also upset me. So it's like, what it says, what makes this program different? When Jeff and Shalea attained their own harmonious union, they paved the way for us to follow. In an act of great love, they chose to bring the world the teachings of union so that we could all experience the joy of harmonious union with our twin flames through this beautiful ascension process. Let me just like simplify that. Like this act of great love to us is that you, you are, you <laughs> have found the twin flame and that we can also find it if we pay thousands of dollars to you. 
there's no act of great, an act of great love and wanting to share everything with somebody with no motive attached to it would have been to just continue doing your YouTube channel and not charging people to watch your video. Everywhere you look on their site, like it, it talks, it, it melds in finding your love and that that's gonna basically cost money. So how bad do you want it? How, how bad do you wanna find your, your love and follow this path? And they break down numbers basically saying like one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions ranges from price from 75 to $200 per hour, depending on who you're working with. And it also goes on to say, for the best results, we recommend an ongoing commitment to Ascension coaching with either weekly one-on-one -on -one sessions or easily affordable group coaching. This will average between 20 to 200 per session, depending on the type of coaching you choose. Is this an investment of time and finances you are prepared to make? And essentially it, that just like, I don't know, I guess that kind of like safeguards them in being like, this is the guarantee, but we're, we're laying it out for you. This is what it's gonna cost for you. And if, if you're not prepared to um, make that type of commitment, you're not gonna see the results. You know, like it's giving uh, MLM, if you're not spending enough money, if you're not working hard enough, then you're not going to m make it, you know, where it's just like the design is kind of set up to fail and for people at the top to profit the most. To have what we have. Like what, honestly, like put a price on it. Like I would do anything it takes. It's I don't give a <laughs> Take my money. There are multiple former members who have said that they were constantly pressured to upgrade their classes. So they would join and be like, okay, what do I have to lose? I'm gonna just, you know, do this $20 one or $200 one so that I can get access to these courses, work through that and see how it goes. And if, you know, then if they weren't seeing results, it was like, oh, you know, like for the best result, like you didn't upgrade. You didn't do the $8,000 course. So that's why you're not finding love. And if people would say like, I'm just not in a financial position for it, they would be told like, that's that, go, go do the mirror exercise. No, go do the mirror exercise. You've got a block right now. You've got a financial block. You need to get that block off. Like we are in a recession right now, people. I can't, the interest right now on things, I say this daily to my husband. Like, I'm just like, how, how can, people afford to live right now. Like I, I just, I, I, it makes me so angry and so sad that there are just people who are struggling and who have great jobs, who work their freaking butts off, but everything is so expensive right now. Like, ugh, I, I don't know that for that to be put on them and be like, oh yeah, you, you're, you're, you've just got a financial block. No, we don't actually. We're all out here really trying effing hard, but then they'll be encouraged to open up a credit card and put it put it on the credit card and then God's got your back and you're gonna be able to pay it back. And I believe it's this tactic of the whole coaching side of it that has kept more people invested, especially the people that have been there for like since the beginning for the really long for a really long time who have stuck it out all of this time because now they have been given the opportunity to be coaches, even if they're not and have ne never been in their twin flame union, they are teaching people. But you find out that the amount that they are making is very small. It's Jeff and Shalia at the top who make everything. In 2019, Jeff had, you know, posted just like bragging like how much he had scaled the business he's even spoken about this saying that he's taken the twin flame universe to a multi-million dollar business we're not just millionaires we're multi-millionaires i'm a fucking millionaire <laughs> they're not subtle like they they live in this five bedroom home in michigan they have a pool they dress you know very nicely they flaunt their flashy lifestyle oftentimes they have students from like their twin flames universe come and stay with them for more like intense training but really like they are there they clean the house do like side jobs for them they're cooking uh, it's, I don't know, it's just, it's just icky. Now, Alice Hines, who I've mentioned several times, who did the Peace Vanity Fair, was part of the documentary 
she actually went out there to stay with Jeff and Chile and see, you know, how they live and how all of this goes. And while she's there, it's just like every opportunity that I think Jeff more so because he talks more. Any opportunity he could to just talk about his success, like he he needed to. He shows his car collection and then brags about the fact that he has like the suspensive, expensive pair of sunglasses and he only wears those when he drives the Corvette and just, yeah. Next year later in detail. Wanted a car where I could feel like I got the rocks that I wanted to have. Got my special glasses that I only wear in the Corvette. Seriously? Yep. So just for the Corvette. Jeff's been questioned about his lifestyle and the fact that he's made these claims that they're multimillionaires, which I, I, I don't doubt. I mean, just given like the way that they live and like I said, the cars that they drive and the amount of m the times that they talk about it. They still, the other day, he was posting on the Facebook group about all the renovations he's doing in the house and this big walk-in closet. And he tries to show it off as like, this is what you can attain, but like, you you have not set that up for anybody in your community to have that lifestyle. That it, that large, 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 large profit is going to you. That's who it's going to. And he's said, you know, yeah, we we've made a great deal of money, but the the motive behind this has never been money. It's just kind of like a perk. Uh, our desire is to heal suffering in the world, which I don't buy for a millisecond, just based on the fact that he's constantly talking about it. The whole thing when you just break it down is really maddening because their success, their money is literally based on a promise that you have given to people. You have used the word guarantee multiple times that they are going to find their twin flame. They are going to have the lifestyle that you have. And when that promise is not delivered, it's flipped around on the person who has put their trust and vulnerability into you and their finances lined your pockets and you blamed it on them saying that they, they don't work hard enough. Their website even says, like if you are experiencing a block with twin flames, you, you it works the same with money. So you could also be having a financial block and you need to heal that. And we know the best way to do that is through the mirror exercise. And I think the purpose of mentioning that and like trying to constantly make your twin flame journey and your money journey coincide, you know, marry together, if you will, is because they want you to keep forking out the money because then they can just say like, oh, you know, you got to keep paying more. You got to make those blocks so that you can keep paying more to get the results you want. It's just, yeah, it's sick and it gets even sicker. We're still not done. Like I said, their teachings have evolved. They now have a church called the church of union and as per jeff's words it's a it's a tax exempt church so it kind of shows the motivation like when you're using the term like tax exempt like what what you're trying to do here is trying to put money through the church so you have to pay less taxes because now you have a church but it's here that they really push the the religion control on people and outright call themselves the master Christ. So this, I'm going to read a Facebook post from him announcing this. He says, behold, we are the prophesied second coming. Shalia is the mother Christ, Jeff, the father Christ. And at the time when he posted this, their yet to be conceived daughter, Grace, who is now born, is the princess of all creation. And together the three are the master Christ, eternal ruler of all creation of God's loving hand. I'm not gonna go through the entire write-up on their the church website. You can go and check it out. It's called the Church of Union. And I'm sure you're just gonna just be as bamboozled as I am. But basically they say that as unionists, their goal is to create heaven on earth. They use that term a lot, like, you know, this, we, we, we can make this heaven on earth. Like if you follow us, you're going to have like that fulfillment and that joy and there's that like eternal peace and happiness. But they've kind of been able to like 
interweave everything together. So on the church website, they they say that God is, is a consciousness of, of who you are. Everybody could be God. And through the process of healing yourself with the mirror exercise, like that, that is the, the fundamental tool to like your self healing and how to achieve your union with God. So they're like interweaving their teachings for like the twin flame universe with the mirror exercise always now into their teachings with the church. And just the way they like speak about themselves, that's what's culty in my opinion. On the website, this is what it says under the Our Gurus tab, which is a big photo of Jeff and Shalea. It says, we believe our gurus were sent by God from heaven to bring us the teachings of union and partner with us in creating heaven on earth. Their authority comes from the results of their work, which completely transforms the lives of all those who sincerely engage with it. They ask us to try on their teachings in ways that feel good to each of us and then objectively review the results in an unattached and logical manner. If we find fault with any part of the teaching or are not satisfied with our results, we are each asked to raise an inquiry that we might contribute to the deeper discovery of truth. What in the what? Their work is a living body of work. Their work is a living body of work that invites each of us to explore and experience it in our own unique way that we may find greater closeness to God, live an even more joyful, peaceful, and harmonious life and make meaningful contributions to the world. And yeah, contributions, that's a big thing because don't forget to go on the donate page where they ask for like 10% of your annual income before taxes. I recently uh, read a Facebook post about a member who basically she was talking about these dreams of renovating um, her like family farmhouse. And this had been like a big focus on her. And she had been convinced by her coach not to put money into that anymore and to invest in herself and the teachings. And she basically wrote on this post that she's like, I think that I'm just being called to move to Michigan instead. And you know, this project really wasn't what I've made it out to be in my head. Michigan, a reminder, is where Jeff and Shalia live. So this isn't a cult though. Now Jeff uh, and Shalia have been, they've been asked about the whole cult thing. They've been confronted to them. They've had to respond on it and some of the responses are different. So one of his comments on if he was running a cult was, he said, a cult is an organization of abuse that systematically takes from and harms its members to enrich its founder, all right? We created an organization of love and harmony which heals and, and enriches everyone in it and everyone who is connected to anyone in it. The problem is, is I don't see anyone living the lifestyle that these two are. So if that's true, then basically you've said it yourself. Like it, it's, it is a, an organization of abuse that takes from and harms its members to enrich its founders. And on the outside, in my opinion, that is absolutely what looks like is happening. Now he's in another interview that he was asked about if he's running a cult, he says, he kind of backpedals on it, doesn't really want to touch on it. And he says, it's a non-word, cult is a non-word. He said, it's kind of hard to get into a cult on the internet, isn't it? How are you gonna drink the poison if it's on the internet? Don't you have to like be a part of a community like and all live on a farm or something? That was his quote, so that's why I said it like that. Um, and no, that's not what it is. You don't have to be physically there like that and that's just another example of the manipulation and to try to just cast you know eyes somewhere else and take the focus away from what they're actually doing a very big common tactic in cult is like family separation and control which a lot of former members say happen here former members have been encouraged by the group to cut off family if they don't fully support their journey with the Twin Flame universe, if they're not helping to provide financially to better their, you know, their loved one's 
life through their the teachings that they're getting. They've also, uh, former members, who I mean by they, have said that they're, in their experience, they were heavily manipulated, gaslit, they volunteered hundreds of hours of free labor, uh, they felt like they were exploited thousands of their dollars. They were also discouraged from seeking professional mental health care and to just follow the path that the Twin Flames universe had for them instead. Jeff and Shalea have de denied any of those claims and said that if uh, anybody is doing anything in the group that is on their own accord and they are adults who can make their own decisions. And while that is true, I think we also have to remember that when somebody is in a vulnerable state, it's not easy to make those decisions. Whether you're an adult or not, if you're going through something, if you're experiencing trauma, if you're putting your faith into somebody that you trust and that is being taken advantage of, it's hard to say like they can make their own decisions because really deep down they're being manipulated to make those decisions is what can happen in these groups. Jeff has also been quoted saying, I am not evil. We have made well over 30 harmonious unions uh, thanks to our teachings. He also says that his group has attributed to people finding healing, uh, people experience real breakthroughs in resolving traumas and pain. They've improved their lives. And he has said that followers who leave are failing to take responsibility for themselves. And that's also something that I wanted to touch on. Out of, right now when I looked on the website, there was like 22 success stories. Uh, 17 of those met through the group. It looks like three of them knew each other prior. One, from what I could understand, I think were friends with another couple that were paired up in the group and kind of like encouraged to join and explore a relationship. And then another two had found each other through like Facebook DM, one of them did. And then I think the other one said that it was an online dating app, which is something that is, I don't know, I kind of guess like encouraged in the group, but not really like out loud. Kind of like, you know, go out there, see like-minded people, see if something feels right. And then we'll see if, you know, it's a connection which doesn't count in my opinion, as a success story, like for them, you know, like these people were out looking on a dating app, like to, you know what I mean? Like you didn't make the, anyway. Just keep holding on with me, you guys. I know it's been a long video. If you're still here, thank you so, so much. It gets worse, okay? <laughs> we're almost done, but it gets worse, all right? Now on top of the church and the school, they also have a program called Mind Alignment Process Program. And this is where they have practitioners that's what they call them on their site, that can heal your trauma in as little as 12 weeks. Let's read a, qu a quote about the MAP program is what they call it. At the core of the teachings, our gurus, Jeff and Shalea, have cultivated a powerful new healing modality that they call the mind alignment process or MAP. It's a safe, simple, scientific, and ultra effective way to heal and resolve trauma in your mind. Learn more about MAP and get a free consultation to see if MAP is right for you. This, oh my gosh, this uh, my MAP program claims to dramatically reduce, reduce, come on, I'm getting real fired up because the words are jumbling. They always jumble, but I'm really fired up. Anyways, they claim to drastically reduce symptoms of PTSD and resolve childhood traumas. In an interview that Jeff did with Vice, he also claimed that the, you know, the, these healing powers are like miraculous. He uses the term miraculous and kind of even skimmed over the fact that he has cured a client of stage four cancer. He didn't really elaborate. He just said that this person came to him. And then when they went to the follow-up, the doctor said that the tumor in her breast had decreased in size. So when I first looked at the MAP website, like the first thing that I wanted to see was who runs this? Like who has partnered, which practitioners have partnered with Jeff and Shalea to have this program that it can make these claims about like PTSD, tra like childhood traumas, 
Like who, 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 did, who, who got on board with this? Who partnered with this? Like, what are your qualifications? And I, I, I don't know what I was expecting, but I got to the staff page and the CEO is Jeff obviously, right? And his qualifications are that he has a big business degree and a successful, you know, twin flame universe business. Next to him on the site, you see Dr. Christine Emmerich. And so I'm like, oh, a doctor, like a doctor is here. And I read the bio and she has a PhD in public safety. Hello and welcome to the MAP Open Forum. I am Dr. Chrissy Kay, the CEO of Mind Alignment Process Incorporated. And I just wanted to take a minute today and just welcome you to this forum and let you know this is a safe and supported space for you as you work through your MAP transition. I'm just so confused as to what qualifications you have with a PhD in public safety to treat people with PTSD. I went on to look further onto the website and the lead practitioner person, I guess, responsible for also um, allocating other practitioners and like hiring them on is Dr. E's husband, Jason Emmerich. Not a doctor, just Jason Emmerich. And his qualifications is an associate's and bachelor degree in culinary arts. It says he has over 20 years experience in the restaurant industry where uh, he was responsible for hiring and training staff and also has uh, extensive experience uh, in organizing events of up to 5,000 people. I just like, I, I could not believe, I still can't believe like me saying it out loud when I was reading it, I couldn't believe what I was reading. I can't believe what I'm saying. Like, tell me where in your ventures of life in the hospitality industry, in restaurants, gives you the right to assign people, <laughs> practitioners, to heal people's traumas. When you look on the site, their practitioners are basically members of the Twin Flame universe. I'm assuming like they are the ones I think most of the qualifications on there. I'll have the site linked. I think even if like my amazing editors can show the website so that you can see they, they're, they're coaches from Twin Flames. Like the, none of them are doctors, not a single person on there, except for Dr. E who's got the, got the PhD in public safety. Now there are several survivor stories, I like to call them, um, about people who have gotten out of this group and shared their story. They're kind of all over the place. Like if you go looking for them, you'll definitely find them. I've seen a couple YouTube testimonials where people just kind of wanted to like vent and just like get it off of their chest. There was one that I came across where he was so like nervous to you know, be hit with a lawsuit, which is definitely threatened a lot within this group that he didn't say the name. Through the comments, you can definitely see like who it is and that's been acknowledged uh, and it's this group. Um, but I did find quite a few on Reddit and I just wanted to share a couple because uh, it's just, I, I think like, I just wanna give hope to anybody who might come across this that may currently be in this group or and is thinking about getting out or maybe isn't and then thinking like, oh, this actually doesn't sound right when it's coming, you know, from somebody outside of the group who has not been, in my opinion, brainwashed. And, and, and or to people who have already gotten out and like are scared to, or embarrassed to share their story. Like there are other people out there. It's okay, like you're not alone. So I wanted to share a couple and just also just to give you insight of these people's experiences because they're valid. And just as Jeff and Shalia say that, you know, they, this is their truth and they know what they're doing. Well, these are these people's truths and they have gone out and gone against people and said that they've made up lies, but why do we get to take your word for it and not somebody else's experience? So for that reason, I, I just wanted to share a couple. One of them says, I've seen them tell students not to take outside job offers, apply to undergraduate or graduate school. When students have asked why, they are generally told that it's not what they truly desire and that they shouldn't proceed with outside education or career opportunities. They will be learning the hard way to truly appreciate what they have in the community. That being said, I want to insert uh, a quick clip of something that I did see in the documentary that just like reminded me of this where so you can actually see this being voiced and this is a woman who her passion was to sing and perform and basically being told no your calling is to be an ascension coach hey welcome back so you've come to my class welcome to live t fast are you ready to work 
Well, I'm here, so let's do it. <laughs> Sounds good. So, what will you do? Like, what's your purpose? What do you care about most? Every moment, I want to be performing on stage. I'm, I'm, I'm really good. I, I'm born with the voice. Because you're talking about it, it started to sound, you know, all the, all the love drained from it. Like, that's not what you, you don't want to do that right now. You don't want to be on stage. I don't? No, you don't. Don't you want to be an ascension coach? You can either follow your heart or be unhappy. There's only one way to happiness. It's following your heart. Mm -hmm. The essential coach is quite in your heart. May you choose wisdom. <laughs> uh, this other story that I came across on Reddit was like very powerful. Obviously, you can feel like a lot of pain, anger. It says, they are running a multi-level marketing pyramid scheme under the guise of life purpose spiritual enlightenment course. Their loyal following will do anything to please them. They will turn into unrecognizable zombies with no empathy, solely interested in signing you up, I guess, to go up into the ranks of the cult. They say, yes, it is a cult. And as soon as they open this commune, aka prison, they will drain all the students' bank accounts and strip them of their dignity and self-worth. They will be a dangerous pair. I, this was written quite a few years ago, and I believe that this was like foreshadowing, like peop, th this person could already like see what was coming. I'm assuming that they're talking about like this, their commune, they have a church, and in the church they ask you to donate 10% they also have an option to be fair, like that you can donate less and just like have a, a, a set amount like monthly or weekly or just one time. Anyone who is considering joining this cult, please, I warn you, you will lose everything you love, everyone you love and be a shadow of your former self. You have all the answers within you. You certainly do not need these leeches to teach you anything about life purpose, ascension, or twin flame. They are liars. They are being purposefully deceptive, encouraging their students to leave their jobs, stay up all night to attend classes, travel around the world to sit in a room and do spiritual work all day and will cause you to cut off your family and friends. They will lead you into a false sense of security. They will tell you you are special. You are one of a kind. Your life purpose is to work for God, to spread the teachings of twin flames, that you will be a celebrity. You will be known all over the world. People will publicly praise you and worship you. They will tell you a God is a man on earth. And lo and behold, let's guess who that man might turn out to be. Is it Jeff? Is he God? You really have got some bees telling people that. Or are you channeling Jesus Christ, Jeff? Which one is it? Because it's difficult to keep up. And I do agree with that. Sometimes he says he's God. Sometimes he says he's channeling it. Sometimes he says it's second coming. I don't know. Okay. And this last one that I want to speak on, this one is pretty sensitive. Um, there is going to be like just a brief mention of our, our, the R word rhymes with grape. Uh, says, I found J and S after meeting a man I believed to be my twin and it came crashing and burning quickly. I liked the fact that they were a couple who spoke in plain language, were very real and had some good lessons. They added me to their group. Mistake on their part, but at least people heard what I had to say before I left. I remember asking about the divine feminine and masculine. I got told, you just know which one you are. Well, I may be a female, but I have masculine traits. They could not answer it. The divine masculine female is a construct based on binary representations of gender. To find they are allocating gender is really disturbing. For those of you wondering, just trust that when you are following your soul's calling, you and your twin are like puzzle pieces. So don't worry about confirming any divine feminine, divine masculine stereotype just do you. But of course, J and S just don't get it. I became increasingly wary of their teachings. 
One I really remember is somebody talking about their twin being with someone else. I remember them saying to claim their twin and that the other woman slash man is a home wrecker. There is a couple in the group, one of which had just left a marriage to be with their twin. This troubled me as it could lead to very destructive behavior. We have seen that like just in their own sessions. There is a lot of people in pain in this group. One woman had been R-worded and was struggling with anger. A man was telling her she must forgive or she can't be with her twin. Another said she had chosen her experience. I called it spiritual victim shaming and posted an article from a psychologist. I was also very honest about how I had approached different traumas in my life. For doing so, I got called names. Shalia called me manipulative and controlling. Jeff used his usual approach of name calling. I fought with fire and I got myself blocked. So that's just an example of kind of when you see really disturbing things and that is not, like those are not the only examples. There are tons of them like that. I've seen them for myself. If you join the group, you can see it. I will we'll just say like it's a precaution, please don't go and get yourselves into trouble and spread hate and do all that stuff. I honestly just think the best thing to do is just spread awareness about it, ignore these people, do not engage with them because it's almost like it can fuel their, I don't know, anger and their, I guess their point of, of being like, oh, look, like people are out to get us. This is, you know, this is the devil work. It's just pushing you and encourage people, you know, to like stay more. So the best thing you can do is just like spread awareness around and not actually engage with them. It has been alleged that in April 2019, there was a student who took her life. This was shortly after she had declined uh, like one-on-one -on -one mind alignment therapy with Jeff. As far as I know, this has never been publicly acknowledged, acknowledged like even on their group, there was never like a, I don't know, a memorial post or like something where, you know, people could remember this person on their website and on their Twin Flames Facebook group though, there is like a disclaimer encouraging people that if you were experiencing Shmuma Child, Schmeidel, thoughts to contact a prevention hotline, which is interesting because every other aspect they've, they've not encouraged you to go anywhere. So that makes me feel like this is, you know, th there's most likely like a feeling of some form of connection, like that they're just like, okay, we've got to do this because we can say, oh, well, you know, if somebody does that, we've, we've got that on our site, not knowing that maybe those personal conversations are not as encouraging. I don't know. Not that, I actually should rephrase that. Not that I'm saying that they were encouraged to do that. I think it's like, they're saying like, okay, well, there's like the disclaimer there, but it's just like a disclaimer on the site to have as precaution, just in case something like this were ever to happen again. Let's be clear. I realize how, yeah, t talking about this is probably going to upset the group, members of the group, founders of the group, but I just hope that anybody coming across it, you know, maybe even if you had found the group and you were looking into it and then you Googled and this video popped up, I hope you know how predatory, in my opinion, this is. If you are in this, and just happen to come across this, just know that you can get out. Like, don't be embarrassed. It's it's okay, like crap happens. People get into a number of situations like this and this is not your fault. And you don't need to continue doing the mere exercise to get out of this time. Like, you did not ask for this to happen to you. This is predatory. Please do not waste another cent on this group to giving it to these people and I can guarantee, even if you, since they love the word guarantee so much, even if you were to amicably just leave, how quick, how quick you're dispensable to them. Like you, you would be vapor to them. They pretend that there's just like this loving community, but if you're not a part of it, you're nothing to them. Just know that you are loved, you are valuable, you deserve so much better in this life. And there are a number of people who have been in your shoes, who have gotten out, who have dealt with what you have dealt with and who have healed and they are proof that you are not alone. I know this is gonna be a question um, in the comments if the police have been involved. They, from the documentary, you can see that there, there have been calls, there have been uh, reports that people believe that they are running a cult and they have even gone out to talk with Jeff. And um, I'll enter a clip of that. Basically, you know, not much can happen. It's really hard to 
kind of press charges in these types of situations because like Jeff has said before, and you'll hear in this clip as well, these people are consenting. Like he's not forcing anybody to do something. And while that may be true, there's such like a thin line between forcing somebody who is, you can, I think when you use that type of, you know, description, definition, you're thinking of somebody who is like very mentally sound in a non-vulnerable state, not dealing with trauma at, the, at that time. And so, yes, you can't, you know, force somebody who is like very mentally sound and then there is manipulation. And although you may not be forcing somebody, you, you can manipulate somebody to do something when they were in a vulnerable state. So the words, yeah, they're dicey. <laughs> And I think that that's one of the things that allows these types of groups to get away with what they're doing because essentially they're not forcing you to do anything, but they are manipulating and praying and controlling you. Right. Nice. 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 You want me to talk to you for a minute? Uh, go somewhere else and talk. Where, 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 you want to come to the down the space station? Not really. People are, are claiming that you brainwash them to uh, commit crimes by, by by stalking these their, their, their twin flame and scamming them out of their money. How can I brainwash someone to do something against their will? All these calls come in that you know there's a cult. What where's the illegal activity that they're what, alleging here? That, that's what we're trying to. We're trying to find out if there's something illegal correct, here. Correct. Exactly. And product online that people can elect to purchase mm -hmm. or not. Right. And there's a community associated with that product that people can elect to be in. Or not. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I do want to share one example as to why I'm sure more people, well, I'm quite confident there are more people out there with similar stories or probably worse and are scared to come forward. And that's because there have been threats made to these members there have there was a, a four page letter that was sent out by Jeff and Shalia two former members who had been interviewed for a vice piece that was written on them and in it they accused the people who spoke up and defended themselves of of them abusing and bullying and slander and cyber abuse against Jeff and Shalia and the group allegedly in this letter, uh, Jeff and Shalia claim that any ex-members that are speaking out will go bankrupt, could potentially be put in jail unless they retracted their statements to Vice. I just want to read a, a little piece of this letter that was sent out that Vice did release. I don't think they released the whole thing, but portion of it, and this is one portion. So they threatened to put an ex, you know, their ex members in bankruptcy and cripple them financially. See, it always goes back to finances, right? Like they're, they're gonna cripple you financially. So bankruptcy means it is nearly impossible for you to rent an apartment, rent a room, and even apply for a real world job. We will not only engage the legal system to take you to court for civil and criminal activities, your criminal activities will land you in jail. I'm not sure which criminal activities your members have done, but it, they say we will hire private investigators to come after you and investigate you. So yeah, <laughs> intimidating. As far as I know, none of that has happened because you can't tell, prevent people from telling their truth. And if they have all of the proof in the world, then their case would get tossed out. There's just no chill with these people. They have done this stuff to their own families. So if they do this to their families, their friends that they had known all of their lives, like, I'm sorry, but like, you are not special. Like, you, you're not going to be exempt. You are just you're expendable. And I want to read a quote that Shalia's father had said in the documentary, and he uh, refers to Shalia as Megan, like that who he knew, knows her as. So he says, some people feel Megan was victim number one, and I reject that. Megan was a complicit participant. She was not a victim. And he's speaking from his own experience from his daughter. And he says in his words that she cut the family off completely, and it was done in a letter. And that when she makes her mind up about something or when she does something, there is a finality to it. It is brutal and it is intended 
to inflict pain. And we have seen that before. There have been some posts that have been exposed of her wishing for members that have gone against her, like eternity in the fiery pits of hell. She's also been quoted as wishing that somebody come back with a severe case of Down syndrome. First of all, there's nothing wrong with people with Down syndrome. Like, F you for like, that. that's your, that's your wish for somebody that goes against you? Like, you cold-hearted B, what the fuck are you talking about? But you like love all, right? He basically says that the only way that he can cope through life and with all of this is just acting like like his daughter is gone, like that she is no longer living because it's the it's the only way that he can get through it and he hopes that one day he can have her back but at this point like he just cannot condone or forget the pain that she has caused other people. Like I said, just look out for yourself look out for your loved ones, you know, know the signs because often it's hard to look out for yourself if you are in that state of seeking out, you know, just comfort and companionship and validation. And then when somebody uses that to prey on you. So, you know, better than anybody, help your loved ones as much as you can. Also, don't blame yourself if, if you can't get through to them. Just pray and wish and just lead with love and kindness. Let them know that you're always gonna be there and that you're never gonna, you know, hold anything against them or be like, I told you so. And that's really, I think, the best way that you can support somebody who is like really heavily involved in something like this. All right, you guys, that is it for me today. Thank you so much for sticking through this. Like I said, I just, I, I had to talk about this. I could not believe what I was hearing watching if you want to go and check out that documentary i highly 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 recommend it um like i said it was on prime it's called desperately seeking soulmate escaping twin flames universe also go and read the piece that allison hines did for vanity fair there are two really great articles that were done on vice go and check out casey's podcast on cult vault and oh netflix just released that they are actually also doing a documentary on this and I think it's November 9th or 6th. I apologize. I don't know off the top of my head, but it's one or the two. So that will be coming as well. And yeah, just protect yourselves. I love you so much. I will see you in the next video. I will miss you terribly until then. Make sure to love each other, love yourself, and I will see you soon. Bye.